I'm Sonia Morton Firth and today I'm interviewing the legendary Danny Clockwork. Danny Gould, creator of the iconic Clockwork Orange, talks about how he recently helped raise over £38,000 in conjunction with Centre Force Radio to help support the NHS staff during COVID-19. We talk about the future of the clubbing scene and the aftermath of COVID and when Danny will be putting on his big events again. Thank you so much for being a guest on my show. It's great to have you here. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. I'm, I'm enjoying the sunshine. I actually go back to work tomorrow officially for the first day. Oh, wow. What are you doing? When you I've, my, my day job is I'm a project manager in construction. Oh, wow. So that's getting back up and running. That's that one. <laughs> and then on the 1st of June, my landscape company starts again. So, yeah. So fingers in a few pies. But what I'm yeah. really interested in... Um, you recently raised a lot of money, I think about over 36 grand for the NHS. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about that and uh, what you did and how you raised that money. Um, we, in conjunction with Centre Force, excuse me, in conjunction with Centre Force, we held an all day. I started, I started it off at eight o'clock and it went on to something like three in the morning. And um, we contacted everybody and said, how do you fancy being involved? How do you going to be for charity? You know, a lot of times are bad, but like, we can do something good on the back of that. And everybody came back and said yes. And, you know, we got them all together, sorted it all out. They did it with Centre Force. We, they claim we broke the internet. There's no way we broke the internet. <laughs> they, had, they had so many people trying to access the um, DAB station that yeah. it went into meltdown, basically. And it was wow. like... They're, they're claiming like you know millions of like hits and stuff across the world and uh, online and it was what when you put them statistics together millions and we raised 38 grand i don't see it as too good an achievement don't get me wrong still 38 still, grand <laughs> it's still 38 grand better than nothing um but um yeah, and that was it. And, you know, I mean, I've done the breakfast, I've done the warm-up, I've played just like Balearic stuff, and then I come home, and if we do a clockwork, and I come home, I'm not, that's it, I'm done. But I just listened to it all day long. Sun was shining, I had my headphones on, it was good. It's fantastic. And have you got any more plans to do any more charity work? I mean, can, pe can people still donate to this, by the way? No, we closed that one off. We gave them the money, because people started saying, why well, can't you do this, why well, can't you do that? It was a registered charity. Yeah. So we gave all the money to them. Um, we're waiting for their receipt now so that we can publicise that and say, look, there you go. It's all fully legit. Um, and it was the NHS, then, was it? Was it? It was the NHS that you were raising. Yeah, money. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, the one we're doing in June, because we're not doing our festival, um, we're going through the process now of reimbursing all the people who want all their money back. Um, and on the 20th and the 21st of June, we're doing another one with an even bigger lineup for the weekend to replace the festival that we're not doing, all for free, all for charity, all for Centrepoint. Wow, can you talk about your lineup? Uh, yeah, if you want to try and remember, try and remember it. I mean, <laughs> Tom Terry, Dr. Packer, um, Jason Byer, Jeremy Ely, you've got Brandon Alex, you've got Trevor Fung, Lisa Loud, Smoking Joe. It's massive. It keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And on. There are loads of people. Loads of people. It's probably about 30, 40 DJs over the, over the weekend. And how do you think um, this lockdown has affected partying? I mean, what are people doing now to sort of, you know, to dance and party? And you no, know, I've, I've just stopped. I've done for five or six weeks. I've done a um, Facebook Live. And um, it accumulated this week. And so, like, I didn't want to, you know, like people do Facebook Live and they just stand in their DJ and they go, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, boring, isn't it? <laughs> so, I was making up names for DJs, uh, like funny names. So, I'd show you know, Small Paul, uh, John Kelly, and John Kelly's, John Kelly's Wellies, um, Baby Boy George. So, I was doctoring pictures and making them. I had loads of them. I've got so many upstairs. And then um, I started buying costumes. And this week, I became, I had the sumo, you know the outfit, the um, the one that blows up, you put a little fan in it. I had a sumo outfit with a Kim Jong-il mask on and white gloves. <laughs> that was one of them. Then I had the queen on a blow-up horse, so you got the little legs like that, and I'm on the top with a queen <laughs> mark, well, actually the queen, and I played queen at the end. Oh, I, just, I had a blazer and a shirt with a 
the handkerchief and a Boris Johnson mask, and I was talking to the camera. Of tech, with all the music's going on as well. Yeah, yeah. And then I came on as um, with a Del Boy Trotter mask and um, <laughs> and a sheepskin coat, and I think there's one more as well. Oh yeah, and then I've got this transvestite um, ladies outfit. Oh yeah. Tattles. And these, uh, it's like a big frumpy thing, and I put an Elton John mask on, yeah. Fantastic. So what's the next? Are you going to do it again? No, that's it now. I'm back to work. I said I can't do it. I'll do a radio show every Saturday on Centrepool, so I, I can't do that and that and work. I'm just... The, when, I, when we come into this lockdown, to be honest, I was physically and mentally exhausted. How did it affect you? No, when, I, when we got to the point when they said that's it, mm. I was glad. I was glad for the break because I've pushed myself and pushed myself for the last nine years. Like, push myself. Five jobs, just finished writing a book, you know, blah, blah, blah. And when it came, I was like, thank God. Thank God for that. I needed it. I so needed it. Tell me about the book. What's it called? It's called Gold Blimey. Gold Blimey. I like Gold, it. Gold Blimey. Gold Blimey. <laughs> and is it your life story? It's the first half is about the madness. And then the second half has got six sections of that, but the second half of it is about me getting sober and being, we're 17 years this year, wow. clean and sober. And, um, and that's what the second half of the book was about. But yeah, trying to write that. So I'd work Monday to Friday, construction. Then I've got my landscape company. Then I've got clockwork. Then I'm DJing Friday and Saturday night. Then I'm writing a book. So, you know, it, it, it took its toll, to be honest. I'm, I'm worn out. So this I'm is worn the, out. So did, yeah. you, you, did you manage to get some rest? What do you, what you do know, you I've do? chilled out. These last five weeks, I've chilled out. What do you do to relax, rest? What's, what does Danny Gould do just to kick back? Music. Just music. music. Yeah, music. Music lifts your soul. Even, even when I got sober and my world was upside down, music was always the thing that lifted my, lifted my soul, yeah. Or gardening. I'm, I'm doing my gardening again now. How did you manage to go sober? Because how long were you? I mean, you were partying hard, obviously in the in the nineties. Oh, well, I was I was partying the hardest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell I just woke up one morning and it, and it was over. You know, you get to a certain point of insanity and you see you're going to be admitted into a lunatic asylum. Or I just woke up one morning and, as it says in the book, you know, not not promoting any way, but it is in there and it's just this voice in my head, my conscience. The first time I ever listened to it in my life. And he said to me, um, it's seven, is it seven words? It's game over, Dan, it's game over. Wow. That's what the, in my mind, and I went, yeah, no, I'll make you right. And that, from that moment in, that was it, it was over. And he just went cold, completely cold? Not cold, it was, it was just over. I didn't have no, no obsession, no desire, no, them addictive personalities had all gone, but then I just sort this stuff, this thing out up here, you know? Wow. Um, and if anyone's watching this, because it's Mental Health Week as well, obviously it, it must affect your mental health. Is there any advice you'd give to anyone that is trying to quit or, you know, become sober? Or Yeah, if you, if you think you've got a problem, then you probably have. There's a lot of people who want to try and cut it down. In the beginning, there was what, two years before I actually gave up, I had six weeks off, beginning of January. I just started running London marathons. And then... Um, because I was crazy, I didn't even want to stop. I had so much energy, I was like, I could just run forever. And then, I had six weeks off, I felt really clean in myself. And then after that six weeks, I rang my mum up and I said, do you think, it's, do you think I'd be all right having a beer? And my mum never used to drink, and she said, well, that's up to you. And I had that drink, and then after that, I started again. The next year, on the, on the New Year's Day, I said, right, I'm gonna do it again. I lasted 10 days. And after that, I was drinking again and I didn't feel no different. I just felt dirty. The year after, the year I actually stopped, I stopped in the August and on New Year's Day, I just carried on, carried on drinking all the way through. I couldn't stop. And I just went straight to AA. I went to AA and it saved my life. I went for eight years and I haven't been going for about eight or nine years. But the time I went to AA, I absolutely loved it. Wow, fantastic. And where, how did it all begin? Or where did it all begin? Tell me a little bit about clockwork back in the day um clockworks me and andy my partner um i said do you really want the real 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 stuff or i not? want the real real dirty oh, stuff okay. Every, all of it let's just say i used to duck and dive in clubs yeah i was young i was like what 20 oh but you're young now danny <laughs> what's that you're young now we're all yeah young. well i don't feel as young 
Um, I do actually feel burnt out. That's another story. But um, yeah, so I used to go out, up, up London and stuff like that. And then I met this guy and then I met someone else like, uh, through friends and then met Andy. And like, I used to know loads of people from all over the place. And then Andy said, like, you know, how do you fancy doing a party? And I said, um, well, not really sure. And he went, oh, come on. And we did it and we started and that was it. And then, you know, like an addict's behaviour is it's all or nothing, everything to the extreme. And I wanted to do the best parties and I worked my, my, my buttocks off to, to make sure they were the best parties. And that was it, 1993, January 1993. And this second, we finished in, I left in 2001. Because I was, um, I was, I weren't too right, and everything had just, everything was just changing then. And yeah. then we relaunched on my 40th birthday in 2012. And so this year, take out, well, this year you can basically wipe off. But this year we are now running longer on the second time and more successful the second time in sobriety than we was in the first one. So, and, and how's the scene changed? Because you've still got the same followers that are coming clubbing. I know because I'd be, um, that are still raving, right? Yeah, yeah. The way it's changed is now it's all social media. It's all social media. You don't have to walk around the streets. You don't have to put flyers on cars. And there was no, when we did it, the internet was either launched or, or was became glo global wide in 1994. So the internet weren't even uh, invented. And you try and tell kids that. You know, we was all getting mobiles in 94, 95. It's like, what? There was no internet on your phone. It's just about, well, I don't even think texts come out till 95 or 96 or 97. Yeah. Yeah, you know? So, I mean, I was changing that since now, but it's, it's, it's a lot more hard work because those thousands of people are now connected to you via your Facebook groups, via, you know, and this is the thing that's mentally exhausting. I've got a job, but I do Instagram, I've got your WhatsApp, I've got free email accounts. I've got the clockwork page, I've got the clockwork business page, I've got all the business pages that come off of that. So you're dealing every day with all your jobs and everything with like 10, 10 12 different like portals for people to access you. It's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. So that, parties in the 90s, I don't know how I organised them. I don't know how anyone got paid. <laughs> I can't remember none of the parties, most of them. So that was the 90s. They said about the 60s, if you can remember it, you wasn't there. You wasn't there. And how's the actual scene changed? Like the people that are turning up, dancing your way, obviously it's... Are they amazing? It's a, it's a lot better. I mean, I've still got footage of some of the old um, clockworks from years ago, New Year's Eve at Camden. The atmosphere is amazing. Um, 1995, May 1995 at uh, Hollywoods. And the atmosphere is off, off the scale. But now it's getting better or it's better. And when we was all younger and it was Aggie and you know, oh, you're looking at my bird or you're trying to nick my bird, all that stuff, all that's gone. Do you know what I mean? They're all mums, dads, aunts, uncles, granddads. Some of them are like 60, 60 plus. Why do you and think then, that is? Why do you think they've gone back to, to their old raving days? Because they did it. And after the millennium, it got, you know, people did it for like what? But I'd be, I was going out since I was like 14, so 1986, 87. And then I finished in 2001, 2001, two, three, four, five. A lot of people started, it was married, mm. divorces, yeah. deaths, marriages, children. Children, you know, yeah. It's a, game. a lot of people got like responsible, obviously like the mortgages, businesses, getting responsible. And they built that up. And you're talking like what, like 10 years later, we relaunched after 11 years. And uh, that was it, they had enough being normal they've gone out and done stuff but then we came back and started doing the big things again the big production the big lineups they've been to bars and clubs i knew for me the scene had changed when my time in clockwork was coming to an end i'd done a party in romford we had one in uh in uh king's cross as well and i was doing my party in romford and all the people that were in there were kids and it was my party that i was putting on before the cross and I was standing there looking around and I was like, I look like the manager. I don't, I don't, I, you know, I looked out, I, saw, I, 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 don't look like, I don't look like I should be in here. And I was like, oh, it was starting to change, you know? Yeah. But now they come back and they're all together and they're all that same age and, it, and it's fantastic. It is great. And they're all just a lovely bunch of people because they're older and they're wiser. And they've got a bit of wisdom and a bit more 
Yeah, that wants to go out now and create agro and stuff like that. It's want to go out have a good time, wicked music, union, what it's all about, and, and just enjoy it. It is. It's amazing. And I have been to a few of your things, and I absolutely love it. It's given me a whole new lease of life, absolutely. And it is almost that new lease of life. You think you've you think you've passed it and then suddenly it's like wow this exists but i can still do this and you walk in you don't feel the oldest person there so no and that and that's why and i've always said if, if clockwork was to get like that then I'd, I'd stop i'd stop if it became the kids then i'd stop i wouldn't do it anymore how long do you see yourself doing it um i gave myself last year i think i said i'd do it for about another two 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 three years but i think i've got about another two years maybe and how has this whole COVID thing, obviously we're not having events at the moment, how do you think that's affected the industry and, um, and when do you see it all starting back up again? It's basically destroyed it. Um, everything we've got on for 2020 we cancelled. Um, Brighton we cancelled straight away, round about whenever. We was lucky to do the big one in March, we just got away with that. Um, the festival has been cancelled. Um, our beef has been cancelled. Mm. The big one we had at the end of the year for 10,000 people in a warehouse, that's been cancelled. Um, so everything's on hold. No one, this has been our conversation for the last six weeks. And I mean, I got to the point where I was just like, that's it, I've had enough. And people say to me, you know, like, what do you reckon? What do you think? And I, I honestly, unless they find a Oh, I don't even want to go into it because I'm actually starting to get bored with talking about it. I know, right? but I agree. I, 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 I don't actually believe, you know, all this, like, oh, it's like, whatever. I don't think he's like that. I watched something yesterday and the man it's now on the end, he's like, what's, what's, what's the panic about? What is the problem? You know, he said it ain't, it's like a mild whatever. There are people, he agrees, that will be affected. And, you know, these people, care homes, you know, whatever. But the world's come to an end over something that's not quite as bad as anything else. But um, unless they find an end, uh, the vaccine for it, I don't think that mass gatherings are going to go on until possibly like next June, something like that, which I'd love to be the first promoter to do it next year. They, they won't go on. They'll, they're going to slowly start building it. But then what you find, you find a reaction and things will happen and then they'll stop them and then they'll try and start it. And you're talking about the world stopping and starting. So 18 months is easy, easy enough. So you don't think even the clubs will open up until then? Obviously, they'll probably open clubs later. Open air events, maybe. They're talking about stuff. They're talking about stuff, open air, this and that, and 100 people, 50 people, 200. So, yeah, and especially in the summer, where it's a lot better. But let's just see. You can't really do social distance, right? You know, <laughs> dancing is going to be really difficult. It's not going to be the same. I'm going to be honest. I'll, I'll see a bloke from work earlier on. I said, I've had enough of it, Bill. He said, let's have a cuddle. We had a oh, cuddle. Yeah. I've, been, I've been cuddling my friends. I've been meeting them and just giving them a quick hug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was just like, wow, that's the first person I've done that to, except, except the family in, like, in, five, in six weeks, seven weeks. And that's mad. It's like human contact. It's like, you know, as because we have to, we have to um, analyse and watch it and see what's going on and, you know, the festival group that we've got and, you know, Sweden or wherever it was, they've done the thing where they've let it go through them and they've done whatever, they're just cracking on. There's yeah. nothing going on there. They're just, they're just carrying on as normal, you know? So I wish that would happen. I wish it would happen. You not thought about doing an event in Sweden? No, you wouldn't get no one over there. We can't travel. No, that's true. That's true. That's we can't true. travel. That's, that's the other thing people are saying is our beef are going to happen. And I said, like, are you, are you mad? There's no planes. I can't get there, yeah. yeah. And then you hear all the stuff you got to take what you want to take out of it and you've got to leave the rest because I think in the beginning of it, I was, I was trying to digest everything. I was listening to the news, watching the news, listening to Jeremy Vine every day, doing this, and I was like, whoa, I've had enough of this. Conspiracy theories. I think everyone yeah. did. There's lots it's a of new people. thing. Everyone went through it. Yeah. Do you think that yeah. un undercover rave scene will turn again? Yeah, but if you do an undercover rave, and because... Because of the, um, not the status in even an arrogant sense, but if Clockwork was to do something underground, if we was, and people were to become unwell, um, then we're the ones who are gonna get, yeah. gonna get the thing for it, you know? There was a lady on Saturday um, who goes to Clockwork, 
her son was playing clockwork stuff. It was his 21st birthday and he had 50 friends in the kitchen. Oh, she sent me the video and I went, oh. The police turned up. They didn't shut them down. Um, and she said in the end at four o'clock in the morning, she had to send them away. She said all the neighbours have all complained about her doing stuff. And it's, it's like that. Everyone's gone corona paranoid. They've become paranoid of corona. Why? Because of social media. Yeah. Social media has created this hype. And, and, you know, and I've got to tell the truth. I can't sit here and go, mm, I've done what was suggested and I'm doing it. That cuddle yesterday was the first cuddle in <laughs> six weeks. I know, I know. Compared to the geezer who used to bite people and run people over, I've done one cuddle, cuddle in six weeks and That's sit up for seven days. Really going mad. Good for you. Hugs are good for you. It's like dancing's good for you. Music's good for you. These are all things that lift the soul and... That's what yeah. life's about, right? Yeah, but that Facebook thing on the, on the Sunday, the two hours, that music used to, I used to have it up and turn the music up. That was the thing that used to lift me up. And then afterwards, like this Sunday, I was like, whoa, come straight back down again, you know? And would you, so you need these things in life. You can have your iPods or your music on the listening and stuff, but there's nothing like a, a mad party, <laughs> cricket, football, all these things together, that, that union of people like celebrating and enjoying stuff. Um, and do you think these Zoom parties will kick, kick off? I mean, I'd, I'd, no, they, I'd, I don't think people try. It was, it was, these were all, what's the word? Um, um, uh, they were all like a fad. When it all started, we did it one Friday, me and my mates. One of my mates ended up, he, he was so drunk, he was just running around naked and doing silly things. It was funny. It was funny. But after that, it was like, oh, God, no. I think it's designed for ladies. Men, they spend 10 minutes and like, I'm bored. I know, I tried it. I did it for an hour around my kitchen. I was making some food, dance around a bit. And then it's like, you can't dance with anyone. It's boring, especially if you're locked up on your own. It's like, you know, you can only dance so much, right? You yeah, but it's whole... all them things that came in. I mean, you know, this is online stuff. Who wants to be online? No one wants to be online. I, I don't see it as being that dangerous. And, and everybody's got it in their head now. That it's the worst thing in the world. Yeah. It's the worst thing in the world, and the world's come to an end. People have died, and I respect that. I totally respect that. I don't, other things could have been done. But then again, it's our learning period, you know? It's the learning from the first one, and if it happens again, then it shouldn't have to be so bad, hopefully, because they'll know what to do. What do you think lessons... What lessons can we learn from all of this, do you think? Um... If you look at them statistics about um, the age of people between 70 and 90 um, who were frail anyway, um, do it if they give you like the correct figures. If you listen to this stuff, it's mad. When I listen to it some days, they say, right, okay. You know, someone who had been in, in a care home for 18 months who, had, um, who was dying, who had like a month to live, but they caught coronavirus. So that's, that's got to go on it. Just like, hold on a minute, they were going to die anyway. But yeah, I know. So it's all these kind of things. Um, you're washing your hands and you feel unwell and all stuff like that and testing kits, just things like that, you know, not to control the population and they'll come out with it. You know, and they can't do it overnight. But um, I think like the first time they'll make mistakes, but they're going to, no one's going to get it right. But the second time, hopefully, these things that they've, they learn from, they can put into place. Yeah, yeah. Danny, why do you think your fans have been so loyal to you, to you and your, because you've got a, a sort of a regular lineup of DJs that you use and, and back to the old guys, Brandon, um, I like say Alex P. Why do you think people have stuck to you guys so much? Because um, when we relaunched on the basis of um, about sobriety, I couldn't relaunch as like the old person I was. It was like, well, I don't know, what's it still about? It'd be like totally against what uh, maturity is all about, you know? I was like, just like, oh, we can't follow that kind of guy. But um, we remodeled it on, on sobriety, you know, like not spirituality, but like, you know, in the sense of like, you know, you, you do unto others as you have done unto yourself. You look after each other, you know, and like, um, like spreading the love. We never charge for music. This is quite an interesting one. I won't say his name, but a big name DJ who we want to or we might have had involved in this free thing for charity. His um, agent contacted me and said, "How would you be in, in? How would you like to be involved in making money online from the DJ sets?" And I went, "How do you mean?" He went, "Well, we've been doing it for, for free now for five weeks. 
multi-millionaire, this guy, right? Now I think it's time the DJ's made money. And I was like, what? And he went, yeah. And I went, I'll, I'll have to stop you there, I said. I said, because basically, I said, every single DJ who plays for Clockwork, we put it on the website for nothing. Mm -hmm. I said, it costs us thousands of pounds for year, a year, because we're giving it away. You know, we could charge or try to charge. I said, but it's, it's called the clocky way. It's not the clocky way. If someone finds a purse or a wallet, you hand it in. It's the clocky way. Yeah. It's the positive aspects of it, you know. And we give them massive lineups, wicked venues, <clears throat> wicked promotion, wicked decor. You name it. So when they turn up, they know they're going to get all the people who come, which is the lovely people you're talking about. The wicked DJs, and everyone knows each other, which is the lovely exactly. Thing. We all, yeah. we all, we've got to have a little shout out for Lisa Good as well, the, the lady on the door that's been working for you for how many years? I think, <laughs> uh, I think she first started about 97, about 23. Yeah, 96, 97. Yeah. Yeah, 97. Yeah, when we started doing Roman parties. Yeah. And she's been with you ever since. I mean, that that's. She was in Australia. And then when she came back from Australia was when we just started doing clockwork again. It was like, the second one and um i said just come work with us yeah mm. trying to watch your watch your face it makes me laugh sometimes watching her run around like an headless chicken but she, yeah she's all right she's all right she's got it she's she's great and she's bringing all, all her friends and it is a real special crowd i've got to say danny as i said i've been to a couple of them last year and i was blown over by just everyone coming up to everyone and you know you go to one then you go to the second one people recognize their faces and it's such a lovely vibe a really really yeah. Bye. So you can't beat it. So why would you want anything else if anyone else is what they've got? You know, you have the people who want to try and tap into what we've got, and you know, you have your instances with people trying to steal your crowd and do this and doing that. But at the end of the day, they stay loyal. Because I mean, you know, when we do our beefa, you do the boat parties, brilliant the Thursday, then we go to Benny Moose Park. And then we was doing and Benny Moose Park's off the scale, then we did an after party. Then this year we're going to do a beach party. With the beach party in our beef room, it's just unreal. Unreal. Started off, the first year we went back was 2014. Um, was talking about it yesterday. How many people did we think was there? Probably two and a half, three hundred in this little beach thing, secret beach party. It ended up, and there was 12 sunbeds, and we sold 50, they called them hammocks, like the yeah. sunbeds are small ones. It ended not last year, the year before, we had 150 sunbeds, the big ones. There was 8,000 people. <laughs> Try social distancing with that, eh? I know, it's like that. And, and totally illegal. Yeah, totally illegal. 8,000 people and we got away with it. Got away with it. <clears throat> unreal. The atmosphere is unreal. Because the sun shines and sun goes down, it's like a rape. It's, it's brilliant. So what's the difference doing this sober compared to being, say, off your tits that when you were in your 20s? <clears throat> I'm going to start coughing. I've got to figure my throat. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, now it's a business. Now I love the music. Now I take great pride in organising it and getting it right and making sure it's 100% all the way through. Now when I get there from, say, it's a day party, 9am, and I leave at midnight, I'm working all the time. You're going around, talk to people. You have, you do get like you know photographs of people having a laugh, messing about. Um, and it's I'm on the ball. Whereas before, I'd get there and I walk in the door and I'm on it. Yeah, that's it. Where's Danny? Can't find him. I'll look under there or look in that <laughs> cupboard or something mad like that, you know. And or I'd gone home. I'd even go home sometimes. I just leave the party and go home. So I can have a party indoors and the party is going on. Loads of times did that in Ibiza, did it, did it in England, done it all the time, loads of times. So now I'm businessman, on the ball, back then I was a lunatic. That's the difference. Do you ever miss those days? Hmm? Do you ever miss those days? Oh, I, I, I miss that bloke. <laughs> what do you miss about him? Um, Because I don't think no one goes uh, crazy anymore. Like that, that old one goes like, I'll show you, I'll show you, but this is in my head. I haven't got the energy anymore. I haven't got that energy. I just had that mad, a lady I did a test on a little while ago for something and this lady was doing it and she went, totally uh, irrelevant. And she went, can I ask you a question? And I went, yeah. She went, 
you ever been diagnosed with ADHD? And I went, not diagnosed. I said, but I understand that I've probably got all the qualities. She went, yeah. She went, yeah. And I think that energy and that undiagnosed whatever it was that I had when I was a kid, that's driven me through these last however long then. Sobriety gave me a bit more energy and then pushed me in the last eight, nine years with all my businesses and stuff. And it just comes to like now, five weeks ago, and I was like, that's it. And I, I think it's actually, I've, I've got bits of it, but that mad energy of ADHD, that, that's gone. I've burned it out, I think. I've burned it out. Well, maybe this lockdown is what you needed. Oh, yeah. Say it. Yeah, no, no, totally, no, I did. And there's a lot of people who actually think that. Yeah. There's a lot of people who were like working. My friend rang me yesterday and he had weddings like my brother. He's got a business, a, a tense business, and he was busy all the time. And this, and my friend, he was DJing every weekend and he's worked for 10 years all the time. And he said, I've loved being at home with the family. <clears throat> Weekends in, going to bed early, waking up a bit later. You know, you can't do it forever. It's like a taste of retirement, isn't it? Really? That's what it is. But I didn't. Really. And I know a lot of people who really, really enjoyed it. And we were lucky that as it happened, the weather started to turn. Yeah, you know, if it had been through the winter, oh, you've got to stay in for seven weeks and it was raining and it was cold. Everyone would have gone. Yeah, it'd be horrible. Absolutely horrible. Yeah. yeah. So, what's the future? Or well, you can't, I guess you can't tell what the future is. So, you're saying your next event you think is going to be next year? Next no, year. we're looking out. The, the plan is that um, I don't think nothing will go on inside. It'll all be um, anything that you can hold will be outside. So, you know, we've got plans at Chelmsford if we're allowed to do something outside for a thousand. Um, do you think that'll be? That could hopefully be September, October. This year? If, yeah, if things happen and change, we've got the possibility of doing something for like a thousand on the beach in Brighton outside okay. um so we we're not looking to put anything inside it's all going to be outside so yeah brighton chelmsford and he's going to look at something in the next few days but only if it's legal you can do it and um, yeah so we have got plans but we're not putting them into place we're sort of like penciling them. yeah i guess you can't yeah no no. Danny, any last words on this? Because it's been a great interview. I've loved talking to you. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely gutted because I had a whole summer lined up. <laughs> it's like, no. Oh, it was heartbreaking. When we, we, we knew, when all this started happening, we knew. We read the news every day. We, we all talked for the people that we're doing the venues with. The venues that we're doing in London, they've all shut down till next year. We was getting it in place because we've never had to refund anyone, you know, maybe here, there and everywhere as friends, they whatever. Put it all into place. Last week, not, not this Friday, the Friday before, I wrote the email on Facebook and then I actually I, I, I pressed the button and sent it out. And then that was probably the hardest thing I've ever done because this year was going to be was going to be unreal. Huge, I know. Yeah, clock stock would have been off the scale because we was putting more into it. More production, twice the amount of performers, twice the amount of stuff that people liked, even more bars, more staff, more toilets. Um, I'll be for I'll be for I love anyway. You know, I loved it. I thought I loved it when I was a kid, but I love I love it more now. So this is our beeper. This is one end, this is the other. I stay on the north, little tiny house, looking over the sea, away from everyone. I get up every morning, watch the sunrise, and it, and it's just bliss. It's just bliss, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss that this year. But if the weather's nice in this country, then then so be it. So be it. Just time to chill out a bit more. My boss sent me an email this morning. I'll leave you with this one. He's always like, ah. and this is how I was before that. <laughs> and he he sent he told me I went to see him this morning, pick some stuff up for work tomorrow. And he's and he said to me, I want you to just quickly tell me, uh, anticipate how long it takes per floor. And so I copied in the lady who's the housing manager from the company we're working from, and he replied back to me. He went, I told you not to copy her in. And I just went back to him. I went, chill out, Winston. The lady asked me when I was on the phone to tell her. All these silly little things that add up. You know what I mean? I've just missed for like, I've not had it. My phone ain't rung. I've turned my phone off every day. Been on the computer. What's the point? I had a rubbish. Everyone talking 
crack. And straight away, told you not to do that. I was like, oh man, the pettiness and, and all that. As, well, you realise how petty it is, and it's all going to start again as soon as this lockdown finishes. We're going to, yeah. all, all, everyone's saying hello to each other in the street, and it's all lovely. Got this community spirit, and everyone just, it's all going to, it's all going to end. 100 miles gonna... an hour. Everyone's going to try and earn money again as quick yeah. as they can. So they're going to, some people are going to go crazy for it and I'll, I'll just take my time. I'll take my time and chill out. Danny, it's been wonderful having you on my show and I look forward to seeing you in person behind some decks very, very soon. Hopefully the sooner the better. Thank you. <laughs> it really has been lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.